In this video I will demonstrate my three favorite methods of making a wire splice in an outdoor environment. This includes wiring under the chassis of an RV, perhaps for trailer lighting or brake wiring. In these areas a waterproof splice is essential as any wire exposed to the elements is susceptible to damage. I have seen water wick up a stranded wire for two to three feet just from capillary action eventually oxidizing the wire. And here's a tip when you are trimming these wires what I like to do is just cut it like that without taking the insulation off and then when you pull the insulation off you twist it as you pull it off and then what that does is it pre-twists the wire for you. In this first example we'll use some solder to make the splice and we do that by exposing two pieces of wire and then you want to make a mechanical connection so you want to twist this as much as you can into something that will hold together by itself and then you simply heat the wire with a soldering gun until you get enough solder on it that it makes a good connection. And then you will need some heat shrink tubing. And this particular tubing has glue inside so it will make a waterproof connection. Not all heat shrink tubing is adhesive lined so make sure you get the correct item. The adhesive is what waterproofs the splice. Also heat shrink is usually classified as 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 meaning it shrinks twice or three times the original size when fully shrunk. And then you try to get it centered. I just have one of these inexpensive heat guns. It's maybe $30. And one advantage of this one is that it is designed with these feet on the bottom so that you can stand it on end. And I prefer that to these butane lighters because the butane lighter you can't control the heat very well and you can in some cases melt the heat shrink. And if you look closely here, you can see where some of the glue has exited the heat shrink. So this makes a pretty good connection. The advantage of this splice is that it is a low cost solution, less than three cents per splice. The disadvantage is the skill required to solder the connection and perhaps being able to get to the connection while you're lying on your back under the RV to solder it. However, the chief disadvantage is that the splice can create a hard spot which over time could vibrate and break. Essentially, you're converting a stranded wire into a solid wire. So any such splices should be secured from vibration, either by bundling with other wires and cable ties or using cable clamps to the side of the chassis or similar. And yes, they're called butt connectors. And this is a fairly recent development in the industry. And it is a piece of heat shrink tubing, essentially with a little solder ring in it. You do about the same procedure. You start with a mechanical connection, like that. And then this particular brand has a slightly larger hole and a slightly smaller hole. Using the slightly larger hole, feed this through. Which you of course want to end up somewhere in the center. And here's where I have the most difficulty with this type of butane because I've actually burnt a hole through this by applying too much heat. I've not done that with this heat gun. Also, you may have to apply the heat for 30 seconds or so to get the solder to fully melt on these connectors. And this has the same issues as the first one does because it does create a bit of a hard spot there. So just be aware of that. 
And the cost of this is about two cents per connection, so it's still fairly inexpensive. Probably the other disadvantage is to get the right amount of heat so that you don't melt the heat shrink. Well, then the next solution is a standard crimp on butt connector. Again, is heat shrink adhesive lined. And we can compare a heat shrink version versus a non heat shrink version of a standard butt connector. The heat shrink version is typically soft and pliable, but not always. So just go by the specs when you order it. The non heat shrink version, though, is almost always very hard. And that's fine for inside use but you don't want to use that for the outside. Now the main difference here is we cannot have an excess amount of exposed wire. We really only want about a quarter inch or so because the butt connector has a little dimple in the middle and it will only allow you to insert the wire so far. And these also take a little bit of skill because when you crimp these, if you crimp them too tight you can pierce through the heat shrink, yet if you don't crimp them tight enough, then they'll fall out. And here you should be able to see the adhesive exiting the connector a little bit easier. Now this one does not create quite as much of a hard spot. So, you know, this has a little more flex to it. And the cost of these connectors can be up to 20 cents or so a piece, so they are a little more expensive. I did not cover three-way splices, as I will do those later in a different video, as they do take a slightly different approach for them to be waterproof. So this is my three favorite methods of splicing connectors together. 